You're all good. Thank you, sir. We're going uh, eastbound on the other side of barrier. There's the cop pulling over truckers. Thanks, man. We are leaving Kamloops, and uh, we're gonna head to Clearwater. Clearwater's awesome, man. Tons of stuff to do there. Waterfalls, little hikes, and uh, volcanoes, and subglacial stuff and all kinds of stuff so we're gonna go explore clear water but we're heading on the yellowhead and no trip no sasquatch prospector trip is complete unless you're on the yellowhead we're just about to come into clear water here just an interesting thing to note so we did the big bend so we left revelstoke and we headed north for about 160 kilometers went and saw a boat encampment there 1811 david thompson and then we headed south back down the exact same way we headed north to Revelstoke. Now, if you were to draw a line at where we were, you'd see Blue River across the mountains. Blue River is only about 145 kilometers from Clearwater, or I think not even like, it's like 90 or something like that. So basically, we've done a U, or like not fully U, but like almost all of a U, and we, we took the Trans Canada over, and now we're on the five, the Yellowhead, and we're heading north again, up to Wells Gray, but we're not gonna go to Blue River which would basically be where the Micah Dam and Blue River are right beside each other, but separated by a mountain range, basically. Not exactly the most efficient route or the, you know, logical route, but it's a Sasquatch Prospector. We don't do the, we don't do the easy or the efficient. It's all about like driving the road, seeing what the road's gonna bring. We're heading north again for like the third time today on the Yellowhead. We're in Clearwater, just left the town. We're uh, heading into Wells Gray, part two. So make sure you check out my video on Helmkin Falls and uh, spa hats and stuff. But the thing with Wells Gray is there's so many different things to see in Wells Gray that it doesn't really matter if one waterfall's closed. Heart of bear territory, lots and lots of bears. We should, I'm expecting to see a couple black bears on the road. We're gonna go to the Green Mountain Viewing Tower instead. What I like to do usually is I like to go the furthest part in the park first and then make my way back heading like heading back towards you know the highway i like to you know so we do half and half kind of a thing we do half the stuff on the way up and half the stuff on the way back so we're going to go to green mountain viewing tower first that's going to be our longest destination in the park it's about four clicks up the mountain on a dirt road there's 22 volcanoes in wells gray and from this viewing platform you can see like the buck hill cone the white bluffs all kinds of stuff, guys. Subglacial volcanism here, the pyramid, Pyramid Mountain. We'll be able to see Pyramid Mountain, which is a prime example of a subglacial mound. And the volcanism in Wells Gray is unknown. They're not actually like the volcanologists that have come here to study it. They don't actually know why Wells Gray is, why it's volcanic, and they don't necessarily know the cause for it. So I figured maybe we go to the viewing tower and like have a little think here. It's BC is an amalgamation of like various parts of the earth because as the Pacific plate some ducks underneath the North American plate and the coast. All the land that's out in the ocean that's attached to the plates that are subducting gets basically welded onto North America. So a certain amount of time ago, Alberta was a coastline and then the Rockies formed. And then there's all these different terrains, right? Uh, Quinellia, Stikinia, Rangelia. Vancouver Island is a part of Rangelia. That's why Vancouver Island's completely different from the rest of British Columbia. The land mass of Vancouver Island is from a completely different part of the world, but over many, many millions of years, it's come to join us and is now fused to North America and is now a part of us. But Vancouver Island used to be a tropical island paradise out in the middle of the ocean, which is why it has so much limestone. And so Wells Gray is very similar. Wells Gray, all of BC, frankly. Cache Creek is the glue. Cache Creek is, the, is an area where everything's been glued together. So I'm thinking it has something to do with that. I'm thinking that this volcanism might have happened somewhere else. And then as the plates subducted, the Ferrellton plate, which is now the Juan de Fuca, it's the remnants of the Ferrellton plate, subducted underneath the Pacific Ocean, all of these various terrains were welded to North America. And so I think Wells Gray might be a part of that. This volcanism occurred somewhere else, but actually, you know what? The subglacial volcanism kind of would lead me to believe that it was here because there's not too many places you can get that. 
Alrighty guys, so we're in Wells Gray now. We're just at the Green Mountain Lookout. Um, on top of Green Mountain, obviously. So, let's go to the map and give you an idea of where we are. So the Flat Iron Trails, Green Mountain, Foot Lake, White Horse Bluff, Placid Lake Trail. There's a whole bunch. We're not doing any of that today. But just to give you an idea of where we are on the map. So, let's take a walk up the viewing tower now. It's really nice. The road to get up is only about four clicks. It's not too bad. Anybody with a, anybody with a truck or uh, SUV will be fine. A couple switchbacks though. It's tight though. So it'd be busy in the summer and you'd be backing up for a bit. But well worth the... Uh... Green Mountain. You are standing 117 meters above sea level here on Green Mountain. The weather patterns that shape Welcome's race climate are clearly visible as the clouds with rain or snow regularly sweep across the park. Forced high by the mountains, the cooling air mass drop their moisture in the park, thus providing the rich vegetation that is typical in Wells Gray. Green Mountain is the most important winter area for moose in the park. Its distance from the higher mountains and its southern exposure to the sun and wind keep the snow depths comparatively shallow, making both feeding and escape from predators easier. These giants of the deer family prefer the tender shrubs that inevitably follow forest fires. For this reason, wildlife managers burned part of the area in the 1960s in imitation of forest fires that first drew moose to Wells Gray. In winter, moose can often be seen on this mountain from the road south of the park entrance. And then over here, we've got Trophy Mountain. That's Trophy Mountain up there. And then Mal Creek is kind of down below. The facing slope of Trophy Mountain rises near the southern boundary of Wells Gray. This spectacular flower meadows and plateau of lakes of this mountain are accessible by road and trail beginning near Spa Hats Creek. Trophy Mountain, like Batten Mountain and Table Mountain, is part of an ancient landmass which was uplifted and tilted by the great movements of the continents. That's what I was talking about with subduction. At one time, these might have well marked the western coast of North America until other land masses slammed into them. In more recent time, geologically speaking, these mountains have been carved and scoured by glaciers and rivers. Battle Mountain marks the northern edge of the highlands in Wells Gray. Named for a battle over caribou hunting rights between the two Indian bands, the mountain shows a more gentle face than that of the caribous. Nearby 52 Ridge, is a volcano which, like Pyramid Mountain, erupted under a glacier along its crest of more than 25 volcanoes, which formed when hot magma melted through the surrounding glacial ice. You've got the Herman Valley over there, Inca Ridge right there, Battle Mountain, that's Battle Mountain, Seven Lakes, and then 52 Ridge over there, which is a volcano. The Myrtle Plateau is bordered by the Caribou Mountains to the north, Highlands to the south, and just out of view, Myrtle Lake in the distant east. Myrtle Lake, accessible from Blue River, is the largest lake in BC to be reserved for non-motorized boats, a canoeist paradise. The Myrtle River carries its way across the plateau and route to merge with the Clearwater River. Along its course are spectacular waterfalls like Helmkin and Dawson, as well as smaller but no less attractive cataracts such as Horseshoe, Metal, and McDougal. In 1926, the plateau before you was swept by an enormous forest fire, which burned an area of over 500 square kilometers. The new plant growth generated by the forest fire attracted moose, for which Wells Gray is famous for. A road and trail system originating at the park entrance permits exploration of the plateau. And then we've got Goat's Peaks over there, Gage Hill, Mobley Ridge, McLeod Hill, Kilpill Mountain, Stillwater's over there, North Peak, Myrtle Peak, Hemp Creek Valley, Central Mountain, and then we've got the Wavy Range over here. Everything, right? This is really cool, guys. It's a really cool viewpoint. Pyramid Mountain. So that's Pyramid Mountain. So that's a subglacial mound. So like when a volcano erupts underneath the ice, if it doesn't burn all the way through to the top and form like a tabletop, like Tabletop Mountain in Squamish, then it forms a mound. That one looks like a pyramid. That's a textbook definition of a subglacial mound. And Wells Gray has tons and tons of volcanoes, but Pyramid Mountain is a very, very like prime perfect example of a subglacial mound. Flour Mill Country over there, Mica Mountain, Mosquito Mound, right? Another mound, Myrtle Plateau, Mount Perseus is behind the clouds, the Myrtle River, you can kind of can almost see it, Pyramid Mountain, Huntley Mountain, Buchanan Ridge, 
Garnet Peak, Zodiac Mountain, Mount Ray. A trail beginning near the Mush Bowl leads hikers to the base of the pyramid. In the distance, 25 kilometer long Clearwater Lake lies bordered by the highlands to the west and the Caribou Mountains to the east. Clearwater Lake is a gateway to Azure Lake and some of the highest peaks in Walls Gray, Mount Huntley, Buchanan Peak, Garnet Peak. 21 kilometer long Manhood Lake marks the southwestern boundary of Walls Gray. Manhood's beaches, campgrounds, waterfalls, and pictographs are most easily accessible from 100 Mile House. When flour mill volcanoes ceased erupting, a few thousand years ago, they left behind a carpet of lava and ash beds covering several square kilometers. I said it was about 35 square kilometers of lava fill. And in some places, 10 meters thick, resulting in the moonscape that was recently exposed by fire. It's a gorgeous view up here, guys. And it's literally like a 20-foot walk from the car park. And it's, a, it's basically a way to see the entire of Wells Gray without having to do a lot of hiking. But I'm not many minerals in Wells Gray. Wells Gray is not exactly known for mining, although that's a good thing because it means we can enjoy nature, but not much gold here. Well, known Hendricks Lake on the other side there, going towards this area, that would probably be your best bet for prospecting mining. So we're gonna go look at spa hats and Shaden because I got some other stuff to talk about there. Third Canyon Falls. There's a bunch of stuff we're gonna do, guys. Wells Gray is a lot of fun. It's a great little park. Alrighty, so we're just leaving the Green Mountain Lookout now. We're gonna head down through the park. So, we're just coming up to the Mush Bowl. The forces of water carving everything out. That's the Mush Bowl over there. It's like a little cave. That's the Mush Bowl though. Just a little cave, the side of the waterfall there. Look at the rock. It is very beautiful. So cool. Volcanoes. Alrighty, so just the mush bowl. Gotta love it, man, in nature. at the uh, Majerus Farm Trail. Taking a look down the trail here. Oh, da da da. Bears in the country. Bears in the country. It's rocky. What do we got here? 
Da 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 da. Bears in the country. Make lots of noise and make a lot of sounds. So that's the river there. We got some moss or some fungi. How far does this trail go? Look at all the wood. Black bears, brown bears, cougars, um, all kinds of nice animals here. All kinds of animals you can make friends with, right? So I just wanted to see what that pathway looked like. Just make a lot of noise, guys. Always good to have bear spray with you, too, and a knife. That's the farm. Mike Majerus built the homestead in the mid-1930s. He cleared the air for growing hay. Bear watching etiquette. Just at the top of the mush bowl here, Dawson Falls hiking point, mush bowl viewpoint. Waterfalls of Wells Gray. That's Dawson. Myrtle River drops over lava flows that date back about 200,000 years ago. Below the lava flows are compacted gravel and sand left by the river that predated eruption. Spa hats. Shade and Viewpoint Natural Rock Bridge was known as Bear Creek. Spa Hats is the word for bear. And then Helmkin. Helmkin Falls, the fourth highest waterfall in Canada. Helmkin Falls drops over the western escarpment of the Myrtle Plateau. This huge lava deposit in the Wells Gray volcanic field was erupted from nearby fissures starting 200,000 years ago and filled the wide valley of the Clearwater River. Layer upon layer of fresh lava created the plateau. Then enormous floods eroded the lava at the close of the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago. These natural processes created Helmkin Canyon below the falls. So you can see volcano, lava, layers of lava, ice, water. Volcano has now been covered in ice. Water and ice are everywhere. Finished product, which is what we are currently experiencing. Volcano is now extinct. Ice has melted. The glaciers have receded and have now carved out this whole valley. And then the mist and the erosive force of water basically is what causes those little cavities by the waterfall. Ni Niagara Falls has a similar phenomenon. So if it was fissures, it would lead me to believe that it might be some kind of uh, continental rifting versus the subduction kind of thing. Because on the coast, it's subduction volcanism. And then there's mantle plume volcanism in the center of BC there, like the Naz Nazco Cones and the Rainbow Range near Balakula there. Those are all volcanoes, um, mantle plume volcanism. But if it's fissures, if it, if it erupted from fissures, that would lead me to believe that it was uh, continental rifting. So that was cool, guys, to get a view of the lava and the glaciers and how that all works. So the Wells Gray Volcanic Field we're in. So it's uh, there's multiple volcanic fields. I've covered all this before, so if you aren't up to snuff on the volcanoes and stuff, uh, check that out. Alrighty, so Third Canyon Falls. Just a little, cross, little hike across the road. Nice paved highway. It's always a good thing. And you get a nice view from this side too. But this is the falls are on this side. Third Canyon Falls. Seems like a pretty stubborn hole that one over there. Yep. They're ready, got the bear spray, we're ready to go. It's like, it's a can of like eye irritant. <laughs> like, it, it, like when yeah. you get down to it. Huge for ice climbing guys. Lots of people come here and do ice climbing. World class ice climbing here. So any of you ice climbers, I don't know, no drones. That's like Myra, same thing.
all the snow down there. The story of Spa Hats Canyon is written in three chapters. 400,000 years ago. Can you distinguish the separate lava flows and spa hots? You can kind of see the layers all the way through the canyon. But here we go, guys. Here's the billboard. It shows lava and volcanoes and glaciers, all the kind of stuff we love, eh? The first chapter was written by Volcanoes of Wells Gray Park. Half a million years ago, volcanoes began to erupt, sending river after river of bubbling lava southward through Clearwater Valley. As each lava flew cooled and hardened, a new layer of volcanic rock was added to the valley floor. By the time the last flow had hardened, the valley floor stood 150 meters above its original level. You are now standing on that elevated valley floor. So you see the volcano, all the lava, lava flows, right? And it just builds up over time. Like many, many thousands of years, you would be long dead before you could really see the progression. So old lava flows in bedrock, it's snowed now, it's nice and cold, glaciers. So that was 400,000 years ago. Now we got 20,000. So second chapter was written by ice. For millions of years, glaciers have periodically flowed southward to occupy the Clearwater Valley. The last glacier melted only about 10,000 years ago and left behind boulders that were transported from faraway locations. Recent glaciers are known to have stood more than a kilometer deep. They ex these exerted a tremendous erosive force upon lava rock, eventually wearing a canyon into it. Today, 300 meters below, the Clearwater River continues to deepen that canyon. 300 meters, guys, to the bottom. That's a long way down. Like, it's like it's almost a thousand feet. The last chapter today, right? Clearwater River, beautiful green trees, greenery, grasses, spa hats, canyon and falls. We're here, swollen by glacial meltwaters and bearing corrosive load of sand and gravel. Spa hats Creek cut like a grindstone into the soft volcanic rock. As it cuts backwards, the creek also cuts downwards, so that today, Spa Hats Falls flows from deep within the walls of the Spa Hats Canyon. Today, the features preserved here are only a small part of the volcanic saga of the Clearwater Valley. Wells Gray Provincial Park has more waterfalls, lava flows, and volcanoes to admire. And that's what we've been doing, guys. We've been doing the volcano, waterfall, and lava flow show because waterfalls and volcanoes are intimately linked together. You wouldn't really think of it at first, and so is snow. All the things, right? as I said, nothing is mutually exclusive to anything else in nature. That's the Clearwater River down there, over there. But you can literally see the buildup on the, like this is all valley floor from down there that's been raised up due to lava flows. And then the glaciers, right? It's melting snow. It's amazing what melting snow will do to the environment. All the lava flows, all the different colors, you can see the layers. Lava flow after lava flow after lava flow and then it just builds up, right? There's a lot of canyons in BC that are made like this too. I've mentioned it in other videos, but volcanoes are basically just smelters, guys. That's why you see all these rocks, all different colors, full of different kinds of minerals that have all dissolved into the various types of rock that you now see here, right? That's how the earth moves things. Gold, silver, lead. All these ores are basically like transported through hydrothermal fluid or magma. And the source of hydrothermal fluid is obviously volcanoes, heat. Volcanoes are the smelters of the earth, guys. Gold and heavy minerals fall out of space or created in space. They fall into the earth over many, 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 many millions of years. Tectonic activity and continents shifting and volcanoes going off and glaciers it moves it all around but how it actually like deposits in the fissures and the cracks and everything else is volcanoes guys they're smelter so it's a naturally made smelter so just when you're looking at a volcano think of it as like it's a smelter right smelting gold smelting silver smelting lead copper molybdenum iron sulfide all of it Up the shade and viewpoint. Clearwater River Road, that's a road you can take to get down there to get to the waterfalls. That's where we were on top of right there, Green Mountain. Went right up to the top of Green Mountain. Alrighty guys, so we're coming to the end of this one. So really good trip. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the bell icon to get notified. And Sasquatch Prospector out. Mm -hmm.